Will anyone survive the time of Jacob's trouble? This is kind of an add-on to the thing of how to prepare to go through the Great Tribulation study I did. And, um, you know, a lot of people are saying in the comments, yeah, it's not going to be possible to prepare for going through seven years of God's judgment hitting this earth. But does the Bible say anybody survives it? Let's look about that. Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to show you something in here that, that actually looks like it's somewhat of a contradiction. But I'm going to show you how it works out. Matthew chapter 25, we have the judgment of the nations, which happens, of course, after Christ's second coming. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. You say, how's that, how's that a contradiction? Let me show you. Jeremiah chapter 30. It's not a contradiction either, by the way. But let me just show you. I mean, as you're turning to Jeremiah in your Bible, um, are there people that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble? Yes, that's very clear from Matthew chapter 25. Definitely, people made it through that time. You say, but it says about the he'll gather the nations and things. I'll show you what where you could say it's a contradiction. Um... Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 11. We'll read, go back and read verses 1 down through 11, but I just want to focus on verse 11 here for a minute. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. So the Lord makes a full end of all the nations, and yet Matthew chapter 25 says he gathers all the nations. Isn't that a contradiction? No. Look at Matthew chapter 25 again. And before him shall, verse 32, before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. Well, he makes an end of the nations, but you see, he gathers the people of those nations, the people that are left of those nations. You can read about it in Joel chapter 2. The redeemed saints, I believe, come back with Jesus Christ, and after the battle of Armageddon in Revelation 19, the Lord sends out his saints to go and gather all people that are left to come to the judgment of the nations there. The, that judgment there in Matthew chapter 25. Very interesting. But let's go back to, to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1 down through verse 11, because this is so important. This, this if you want any kind of proof uh, that the body of Christ is gone before this time period that's coming, this is one of the best proofs that there is. Uh, just simply ask, well, who's that time period for? Uh, it's kind of weird when you have a Christian that believes that they need some kind of further purification in the future. And how does that work for saints that are already dead? They didn't have to go through the time of purification, this great tribulation, but those who are alive do. Come on now. Big problem there. You have people that don't trust in the blood atonement, you see. People that are saying that there's some self-righteousness there, you know, some good works, some good deeds. Do you come to church every time the doors are open? Have you been baptized? Are you a member of the local New Testament Baptist church? You get the, the picture? Uh, some people that are just going to be so holy that they're going to be in that great tribulation time period. And they're going to do better than you. And the pre-tribbers are going to fall and they're not going to, they're not going to make it. And a lot of them are going to fall away and be deceived and take the mark and all this other stuff. They'll lose their faith. And they, you see, they're work salvationists. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, lo the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to, re to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Oh, I believe that the nation of Israel is the black Hebrew Israelites. And the, and the Native Americans and some Puerto Ricans too. It's those people. Are they in the land that the Lord gave to their fathers? No. You say, well, well uh, uh, Israel is now America. Okay. Um, is that the land that God gave to Ham and his descendants? No. No. <laughs> uh, Brooklyn is not New Jerusalem or some kind of thing like that or, or whatever else. All right, Black Hebrew Israelites and that whole movement is a satanic movement. It's the synagogue of Satan. You say, what about British Israelism? 
all the the, the different you know peoples of of uh, you know northern Europe or whatever else. Those are the lost twelve tribes. Okay, are they in the land that the Lord gave them to the father of Jacob? No. Who's in the land? The Jews. Fulfilling Scripture. It's not just some kind of thing of people going around saying, I'm the true Jews, we're the true Jews. It's connected to land. And God brings them back in unbelief. God doesn't bring them back and say, hey, you know, praise, you know, you're, you're all saved, you're all redeemed, come on back to the land, and now I'm going to pour out the time of Jacob's trouble on you. Doesn't make any sense. He brings them back in unbelief and then pours out his judgment on them for rejecting Jesus Christ. Verse 4, and these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Could it be any clearer? Not the church. You get that? <laughs> Verse 5, for thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. But you read the Pauline epistles and every single one of them ends with a promise of peace. From the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to have peace that passeth understanding except for in the future, because then God's going to take it away. Come on. Verse 6. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. All probably because one of the seals that's open is a famine. And you have a man there that's Jewish, and he can't take the mark of the beast. So he's hungry. I need food. I'm starving. These are the words that God spake concerning Israel and Judah. Not the church. Not the body of Christ. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Yeah, the Jews, there's going to be some Jews that are going to be saved out of that. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. And they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Prophecy about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem, physically for a thousand years. Any other system is satanic. You say, what would you say? Any other system than premillennialism is satanic. Post-millennialism, post can barely even get it out because it's so stupid. Uh, oh, the church is going to bring in the thousand-year kingdom, then Jesus comes back at the end. Stupid. Amillennialism. There is no thousand-year kingdom. Okay, then you just took away from Jesus Christ, a promise given to Jesus Christ that he would rule for a thousand years. And, uh, oh, uh, Satan's bound for the thousand years? Revelation chapter 20? How does that work? You mean to tell me that uh, Satan's been bound for the last 2,000 years? I don't think so. <laughs> Verse 10. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. After the judgment of the nations. But certainly not during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> Uh, the Lord's going to show the Jews some things, and it's going to be pretty bad for them. Verse 11, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. The time period that's coming is for the Jewish people, for the nation of Israel and Judah. That's who it's for, not for the church. The church is gone, but here's the whole point. Will there be people that will survive that time? Yeah, I do believe that there will be. Why? Um, well, you see the thing of God making a full end of the nations, but, uh, and you say, boy, that's bad. Um, actually, it's good. You say, what are you talking about? Could you survive in an America uh, if you don't get saved before the, the catching up of the body of Christ? Could you survive in an America the way it is right now? No. How about a 6G high-tech prison control grid? The NSA and the CIA and the FBI and all these other agencies going around tracking everybody down. No, you couldn't survive. But what if God makes a full end of those nations? And all of a sudden, the power grid is down. And all of a sudden, you know, it's without rule of law. 
W-R-O-L, and the end of the world as we know it, and all this other stuff. See, you're a fool if you're trying to stock up seven years worth of food. But there will be people, I do believe firmly, that there will be people that even though their nation has crumbled, they can come out to a place like this and they can walk around and say, hey, that's edible. Hey, this is good. I can eat that. Hey, oh, there's a moose. Bang, shot it. There's some food. There will be people that I do believe, maybe even people that watch this video, that miss the catching up and they say, I'm not taking the mark and I really don't feel called to be a martyr. I'm going to try to endure to the end to be saved. The Bible says there will be people that make it through. And you're going to hit the judgment of the nations if you do. You better make sure that you're following Matthew chapter 25 down through there, feeding the stranger and you know all that other stuff. I'm not going to go through all that. But uh, there will be people that make it through. So just wanted to say that to kind of add that on to the thing of how to prepare to go through the Great Tribulation. Because if you're preparing to go through and you think you're going to keep your mortgage and your job and you go to your little church building and whatever else, that's not going to happen. Um, if you go into that time period, you better get a backpack on and you better get out there and start hiking into the wilderness someplace and pray. Pray that God makes a full end of your nation that you're in. And you better get out to an area like this or whatever else. There are going to be cabins that are abandoned. There are going to be houses that are abandoned. And let me tell you something. You say, well, that stuff, oh, that seems so far out into the, into the future. Um, let me just explain something. The economy right now, I'm going to be talking a lot more about this in other studies. The economy right now is crumbling worldwide. So what would you say? Worldwide. Economies are crumbling. Nations have created so much artificial wealth through fake, phony currencies. Debt. Right now, I think China's like 40 trillion something in debt. America's 20 something trillion in debt. All these other countries, debt, 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 debt. People are living a dream. That's all it is. And the system's going to come down. And the Bible says it's going to come down. The Antichrist is going to come in. He's going to change times and laws. He's going to cause the mark of the beast. Well, how's he going to cause the mark of the beast if it's strong financial times? He's not going to. A lot of things are going to be brought down. And I believe that when the full end of the nations happens, when there's world war and power grid failure, I mean, you have another thing in Revelation where you actually have, uh, you know, the Antichrist and, and his kingdom and things for days. Uh, there's no light. And they're gnawing their tongues for pain and think, no light? You mean to tell me you can't have a flashlight? You know, turn your flashlight on. Sorry to blind you in the eyes there. <laughs> but, you know, turn on a flashlight. Don't you have solar power? Don't you have grid-connected power and all the nice lights and everything? It's all gone. I believe, and this is just my, my theory here, but I believe maybe a little bit past halfway into the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to have, you know, there's, there's a time when people are being scorched with great heat. You know, that could be a solar flare. There could be uh, electromagnetic pulse weapons used. You know, they're already talking about that stuff. You know, the recent poll said, you know, how long could people survive with, that, with a grid down scenario when people were saying less than two months? <laughs> but man is evolving. I don't think so. You can't survive for less than two months? Something that 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, people didn't even think about it. What happens if the electric goes away? They'd say the what? People making their own food, growing their own food, and able to come out here and live easily. Now modern man, with all of his advancements in technology, quote unquote, can't even survive out here. Um, I don't know how long this study would be able to survive after we get called up, after the body of Christ leaves. But uh, if you get to see this, or you get to hear it, or whatever else, however it gets out there, um, get out into the wilderness and pray for the destruction of the nations. Because once the grid goes down and everything else, you have a chance of enduring to the end. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, the best solution right now, if you're watching this, and there hasn't been any kind of a major event where people disappeared, not very many people. Uh, the body of Christ is actually very, very small, those who are truly born again. Uh, if you're watching this, 
and that event has not happened yet, get saved. Um, time is running out, and um, God is so merciful, <laughs> let me tell you. And uh, I believe that when that last saint is saved, the body of Christ is leaving. And then this horrible time is going to start, the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, get saved. Get your salvation worked out. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.